Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice with CostelloWellness.com, and today we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about insulin's role in obesity. Uh, I've talked before about glycemic index and carbohydrates and weight loss and type 2 diabetes, but we're going to give you a little refresher course today. Insulin, everybody's heard of, but don't necessarily understand what it does or what it means. Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas that takes sugar out of your bloodstream and it transports it into your muscles and tissues to be used as energy. If you do not have insulin, you're a type 1 or insulin dependent diabetic, everything you eat is literally trapped in your bloodstream as sugar and your sugar may be 600 or 1000 and you are starving to death because that sugar cannot get into your tissues to be used as energy. When you eat carbohydrates, the more carbs you eat, the more insulin your body makes. The problem is, is that insulin makes you hungry and insulin makes you store fat. So the higher your insulin levels, the more you want to eat and the more you eat, the more insulin you make. The higher your insulin levels, levels are, the more obese you become because you tend to store your energy as fat. When we eat carbohydrates in particular, we talk about simple carbs and complex carbs. Think about carbohydrates as a string of pearls. You have a hundred pearls on a strand and each one of those represents a carbohydrate. One carbohydrate in the body makes one insulin and you take that and put that into your bloodstream. When you eat simple carbohydrates, the chain of pearls are already cut up into individual pieces so you swallow a hundred individual pearls and they are literally almost absorbed at the same time. Your body sees all of this carbohydrate in the bloodstream and it panics and it says let's make a bunch of insulin because all this carbohydrate is coming down the pipe. The problem is is that 20 minutes later you've processed all the carbs but your body's still making insulin and then you get hungry again while you eat Chinese food and you're hungry an hour later is because you make this high insulin release and it chews up all your carbohydrates and then you become hypoglycemic. When you eat complex carbohydrates, you're actually swallowing a whole strand of pearls and your body has to cleave them or digest them one at a time and you have a much slower release of carbohydrates into the bloodstream by ones and twos. So you have a couple of carbohydrates enter the bloodstream and your body says let's make two insulin to take that and put it into the muscles and then a couple minutes later the next couple of carbs come from your gut and into the bloodstream and you make another couple of insulin. So you don't have this huge insulin release, it's a much slower, steady, low insulin release, and then you don't peak and crash so you're not hungry later. The other thing that we can do to inhibit insulin release is to do like the zone diet or paleo where you eat proteins and fat along with your carbohydrates. So when you have a pork chop in your stomach and you eat carbohydrates, you have to digest the pork chop and that slows the absorption of the carbohydrates. So you can get away with a little bit more simple carbs if you have protein at the same time and you want to always make sure you have protein and a little fat in your meals along with carbohydrates and that will slow the insulin release. When you go to the doctor and they want to check you for diabetes, they usually check a blood sugar but they don't check an insulin level and the problem is, is that you may have a hundred times the normal amount of insulin doing the job of what normally one insulin would do and if they check your blood sugar it's technically normal because you're getting all that sugar out but you're doing much more work to do it so you always if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic or overweight should be checking insulin levels along with your fasting glucose if you want to do a two-hour glucose tolerance test like they do in pregnancy you check a fasting sugar and an insulin they both should be normal you then drink 75 grams of glucose very simple sugars and you do one or two hour recheck of not only your blood sugar but your insulin levels and if your insulin levels are sky high even if your blood sugars are normal then you're insulin resistant and that's going to be a detriment to your being able to lose weight because your insulin levels are high all the time they make you want to eat all the time and they make you store fat so don't forget about insulin um, carbohydrates you want to do complex carbohydrates you want to balance them with protein and fat um, um, to avoid these insulin spikes and hypoglycemia. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.